Hi everyone, Mr. K here with another video. This time we're doing pets, battle pets, or pets that fight, whatever you want to call it. Um, I know it's been a while since I put a video up, but I am on summer break. I'm off for the summer because I am a teacher, so uh, it took some time, but I'm ready to get back into it. So let's take a look at what we have here. So there is me, and there is my pet, the green thing, and he hops, or she hops. I don't know what it is. It's a square. But it's a pet, and pets hop, because pets don't walk. I don't know why that is, but I felt like I needed to make him hop. The pet's got a couple of cool features. He will try to catch up with you, and in fact, he will jump if you are too high for him. And if he gets left behind, he'll move a bit quicker to catch up. And on top of that, if the pet gets really stuck, he'll just jump to your position, because the pet does not want to be left behind and has superpowers. He also fires lasers. So this is what we're going to go over today is the movement of the pet and it's three different scenarios where it just follows you, it follows you quickly, it jumps to where you are, and then it fires lasers at the closest enemy that's in range. So I'm going to leave this open because I'm going to refer back to it and let's jump into the project. So sprites, objects, uh, I got five of them, enemy, laser, pet, player, and wall. There is really not much to talk about in any of these, save for the pet itself. Uh, the project will be available in the description for download, so if you want to take a look at them, you can. I do want to briefly mention this script, which is scary and intimidating. It is basically a movement script that I... Oh, that's dumb. My mute key is my tilde key, and of course I put in a million tildes. Um, this movement script more or less is pulled from Sean Spaulding's platformer tutorial video. Uh, I, of course, tweaked it to my uh, needs, but ooh, no, don't save anything I just did. Um, if you're curious about it, of course, download and look at it, but also check out that video. There are some things in, um, in the pet itself that also borrow from that, so I recommend going there first and getting an idea of how that um that movement and collision system works to get a better idea of how all of this will work. Okay, let's get into it. The pet himself, herself, itself. Create event, just a bunch of variables. We'll get into each of them later. There is an alarm event. This is used for a cooldown. It does absolutely nothing, but I have to put a comment here in order for the alarm to work. It's stupid. Um, I think I did a video where I mentioned that somewhere else. Um, I don't remember which one it is. I'll put an annotation in if I remember. Um, I'm not going to get in the into the step event because that's where all the fun stuff is. Outside view is basically just a little flag, uh, flag that I set if the pet is outside of view. Set this to true. And then I'll show you what happens with that in a little bit. So, wall collisions and apply movement. This is in the same vein as the movement script, basically pulled from the uh, Sean Spaulding video on uh, platformers. Um, so I'm not going to go into tremendous detail here because this has been done before, and I do suggest you focus on that if you're not sure how any of this works. Um, the general gist is it looks in front and below uh, to see if there is a... Um, excuse me. It looks, um, it looks, in, it looks to the left and right, and above and below you, you the pet or whoever. If there's a wall, and if there is, basically stop moving. Okay, uh, this line right here just it sets it up so that it moves you as close to the wall as possible without leaving a gap. And then movement is applied at the very end after all of this. So it goes through a bunch of um, notes. This is second. All the movement stuff happens. Collisions. And then once all that is done, then it will actually move the pet in this case. And of course, pl apply, the, uh, ugh, apply gravity as well. Okay, so let's get into the actual pet stuff, unique pet stuff. Um, I'll go over the concept first and then try to explain some uh, lines of code here. So we have um, catching up horizontally and catching up vertically. Horizontally is broken down into four different scenarios. Um, first off, if the pet is out of view, then if the pet is a significant distance away from the player, 
than if the pet is just a normal distance away from the player, average, I don't know what you want to call it, and then if the pet is, and then if none of those, then that's assumed that must mean the pet is right next to the player. Oh man, see, the mute key I thought was a good idea, but that just makes beeping noises or types, so I got to do something about that. There it is again. Okay, so let's go into each of these and find out what's going on here. Um, I'm going to work my way backwards, I think. Yeah. So this is the typical case where you're moving and the pet is going to follow you. So what it does is it checks to see, I missed something first, backtrack all the way up here. Player X distance. This is going to take the X value of the player and the X value of your pet and subtract them to find the distance between the two. And that distance is going to be very important for determining how the pet is going to act. So what we're going to do in the typical case is take a look at that x distance and grab the absolute value. Absolute value is just um, the, the mathy definition is the distance from zero on a number line. But you can think of it as just take the positive version of the number. Because in this case we want this to work whether or not we are to the left of the pet or to the right of the pet. So putting it... Um, through an absolute value function is going to make our lives a lot simpler or else we'd have to do it twice and I don't want to do that so it's going to take a look at the player distance and if that distance happens to be and this is where I got a little bit fancy fancier than I needed to do if that distance happens to be one and a half times the size of my player it's sprite width move okay I'll get into the move in a second, but I wanted to make sure I get this clear. Um, I have this um, set up this way, so if somebody else wants to borrow this or if I wanted to change the size of my player for whatever reason, um, it's consistent. So it's one and a half times the width of my player's sprite. Um, you can, of course, just put a number in here if you want. Uh, you might have to tweak some numbers a little bit to figure, figure out exactly what works for you. Um, the smaller the number, the closer the pet will be. Uh, the larger the number, the farther away the pet will be. Right? Yeah. Okay, so it checks to see if he is, if the distance gets over this, then we're going to start jumping into this. Right, so um, this is just the movement itself. Okay, so the pet speed times the sign of the player x distance. Now this basically determines what direction the pet needs to move in because depending on where where the player and the pet are in relation to each other, this number will be negative or positive, okay? So if it's negative, that means the uh, pet needs to move left. If it's positive, the pet needs to move right. So that's the whole purpose of this thing over here. So whatever the speed of the pet is, times by basically the direction he needs to move, and then that gets your pet dx, the distance the pet needs to move. Up above it is the hopping that the pet does. And this is, of course, completely optional. I threw it in there because I kind of liked it. Um, but what it does is it just takes a look to see if the pet is on the ground. If the pet is on the ground, then jump. And there's a negative one in there because, of course, um, jumping is going up. And for whatever reason, I'm sure there's a good one, but um, going up in Game Maker is the negative direction for Y. It's opposite of what you got. Um, it's opposite of a typical um, XY coordinate plane. Up is negative and down is positive. So this had to be thrown at the end there. Okay. Um, the lucky, uh, the good thing is that this is identical to down here. There's only two changes here. First off, it looks for a slightly larger distance. So twice the width of my player sprite is going to trigger this event. And this event is identical except for this right at the end here, um, just like this, except times 1.5, which means basically it's going to move 50% faster. The pet's going to move 50% faster than it normally would. This way it can catch up to the player, and once it catches up, then it will no longer be triggered by this. It'll be triggered by this and move at a normal speed. And just to show you what it looks like, in case you missed it, I did, missed it when I did it the first time. Oh, i got to go all the way back. I gotta get him stuck behind a wall. Fall. 
There he goes. And there, he speeds up. And as soon as he gets close enough, he's back down to regular speed. Okay. Uh, before I get into this, I do want to mention that the catch-all here is that if there, if um, basically if he's not out of view, if he's within one and a half, um, one and a half my sprite width, then don't move at all. Um, you can see that by the fact I can move back and forth, and the pet is not going anywhere. I'm close enough where he doesn't have to move. And um, this last one here, this is the uh, extreme case where if the pet is out of view, that's the whole reason why I have this um, event here. If the pet is outside view, that flag got triggered, this pet out of view flag. So if that is true, the pet is basically going to jump to my player's X and Y position. Um, I did a little bit of um, subtraction here just so that the player, the pet doesn't end up directly on top of, or I guess in this case underneath, the player. He's going to be behind him just a little bit. Um, this is in here because um, I ran into a strange bug where if the pet was jumping, see I was permanently jumping because I'm above him, if the pet was jumping when this, when he went out of view, and I happen to be jumping, what he would do is he would magically appear and then jump off the screen, and then because he's out of view again, he'd have to do go through the whole jump to my position thing again. So a little minor bug, but I tweaked it so that when he when he does jump to a position, he just immediately starts falling. And then, of course, since we're done with that, we set the point, uh, the pet out of view back to false so we don't get stuck in a loop. Okay, that is catching up horizontally. Vertically is pretty much the same exact thing with a couple of minor changes. Um, it's going to check to see if, in this case, not if I'm above or below, just above the player. So it's going to take the pet's position minus the player's position. And since, again, the Y coordinate is essentially upside down from the way, I don't know, most of us have been taught for years. Um, if this results, this, if the player is above the pet, that results in a positive number. So if that number is greater than one and a half times the height of my sprite, we're going to do a jump again, just like we did above. But the only difference is instead of using pet jump speed, I'm using the player's jump speed. This way he jumped the same amount that I do. So I jump and he jumps the same exact amount. Okay, that is that. Uh, firing on enemies. So this one was fun to do. The basic uh, breakdown here is that it's going to check to see if there are any, the pet is going to check to see if any enemies are in range. And if the enemies are in range and my laser gun is not on cooldown, then it's going to find the nearest enemy, uh, figure out what direction to shoot in, and then fire a laser in that direction. And then, of course, trigger the cooldown. Let me show it off to you again. So, not firing. Oh! just got in range and he's shooting at the closest one and if you notice if I move a little bit at a time he'll eventually switch over to the other one so a little bit of AI really really basic AI but just looking for the closest enemy and firing at it um, yeah I did not set the enemies up to be killed but um, I figured it'd be better to show off the shooting more than killing anyway so let's go through the code a little bit more in detail now that we got the general gist of it so finding the enemy in range I use a collision circle circle has a center at my pet and with a radius of 200 and it's looking for an object enemy. This is for whether or not we should use precise collision checking. I recommend leaving this at false unless there is an absolute need to. It can be intensive and it probably wouldn't affect the game like I have right now which is just a demo but um, if you have a lot going on um, it's not good practice unless you absolutely need it. Okay, um, Using just collision general General vague collision checking is quicker for the computer to do and not as uh, resource intensive. Uh, this last bit here in this line is for not me. Um, basically, if the object calling the collision, collision circle should be included 
in the check. And since it says not me, that means true, yes, don't check me. So I don't want him to check the pet, even though the pet wouldn't register anyway. Um, I'm sure there's some reasons why this gets used. I haven't run into them yet, but um, typically you want to leave this at true. All right, next up is, I just thought of a reason. Bombs, maybe? I guess if you shoot bombs in the explosion, it should destroy anything. And if you're in the radius, then you should get destroyed, too. Oh, I guess that would work, too. Anyway, off topic. Next up is the if statement. Uh, if the enemy is at, if there's an enemy actually in range and the cooldown is up, we're going to find the nearest enemy. There is a very handy function called instance nearest, which looks for the nearest enemy. So it starts at um, starts looking at X, Y, and starts looking for the closest object enemy. Once it has that closest enemy, it's going to we are we bleh, not doing well today. We are going to check for the uh, the direction from our position to the enemy's position. So point direction will do that for us. So this is the pet's position and then the nearest enemy's X and Y position. This will spit back an angle for us. So now that we have that angle, we can actually fire off our laser. So with instance create, it's going to fire it off from the pet's X and Y position. Speed of 20 and then direction comes from up here same thing with the image angle so this way the laser actually looks like it's firing in the correct direction okay uh, one thing I'm going to point out is that this is very simple this is simple because my laser is pointing um, well it's really pointing left or right but essentially it's pointing right right is zero degrees so if you want to make uh, less of a headache for yourself as far as math um, typically you want to have everything pointing right because that is the zero direction. So this way if, I don't know, the enemy was right above me, that's 90 degrees. That means set the direction to 90 degrees, the image angle to 90 degrees. Um, we don't need to worry about it. If this laser, if I made this laser pointing up and my enemy was above me, well the enemy above me means 90, that means I would have to add if I added 90, you'd be pointing left and everything would just not work out the right way. So um, that is it. Oh, then there's this at the end here. Uh, the alarm gets reset as well. So that is it. Um, I got to go because good timing. People just walked in and.